Welcome everyone to another Company Pure Super the Cast. It's gonna be on Troll Pawn this time. We're gonna have Zero who uploaded the replay to Kotu.org playing as the Soviet Union. His friend is gonna be Zuzu in all caps, so it's actually Zuzu playing as the Soviets as well. Gabba Salve, who I believe I casted once. The name is not a name you forget easily because it doesn't make any sense. So I I think I remember him being one of my casts, but I don't exactly remember the person. And then Panther Fame. Panther Fame is going to be going for damage 42 already. Interesting. Pretty popular strategy for the Wehrmacht, so we'll see what he does with it. He's on the right side of Trapon, so he could just try to bum rush the church, I guess, um, and see if God helps him with the MG42. But I don't think that would be too great of an idea because. If uh, the Soviets manage to get out a clown car with a uh, flame for a penal, it's a very easy counter for the rushing into the church with an MG42 strategy. Although we'll see what happens. Uh, on the left side of the map, we do see a bit of an OKW versus Soviet matchup, so we'll see what happens here. And there's two Volkskarniers coming out already for Gabis, and he's going to be able to use those pretty effectively in this terrain with quite a few pieces of heavy cover that are available to him. He's going to be able to use the long range advantage of those infantry units to pretty much their best potential. Now, he's going to be trying to shoot it out with the pioneers, but unfortunately here comes the machine gun and it's going to be relying on the protection of the almighty lord to actually um, get the fire down on these conscripts. However, the conscripts, there's just a bit too many of them. I think they're going to be able to outflank the machine guns quite easily, especially if they keep moving and keep the MG on its toes and sort of keep it moving about. Does manage to get a murderous burst down on the conscripts who are trying to climb up the stairs and managed to pin them down right at the steps. So that's going to be a very, very good piece of uh, damage dealt to these conscripts. Three members are already dead and in the process of dying and I think that the Okay, volume was a bit too loud, so I removed a little bit of it. And in the left side, we do see a bit of an engagement between these Volkswagen years and conscripts. Volkswagen years managing to get into the close range of the conscripts. Unfortunately, I still think the conscripts are a little bit better at close range, so I'm not quite sure as to why these Volkswagen years decided to charge. And so, obviously, the conscripts, along with uh, the support of the common engineers, will be able to win this engagement if they can bring in the Sutter squad in close range. They're going to be able to bring down the health bar of these folks Volkswagen even quicker, which would be quite useful as then they will be able to capture the munitions point. There is a flank coming in from the Sturm Pioneers, very deadly going to be at close range with these Sturm Gewehrs, and obviously don't want to be facing them, so they're going to retreat very quickly as they kind of value their lives, at least uh, Zuzu values their lives, and Zuzu values even more the forward headquarters. Interestingly enough, he's going to try to get that out, and reinforce his combat engineers, but the combat engineers are taking a lot of damage from the Sturm Pioneers. At this point, obviously Zuzu decides to get his units out so that he can reinforce in the field, and we'll see if he can manage to take control of that position and keep it with the forward headquarters running. Urban defense tactics obviously being not something that you see every day, but it's something that can work against less experienced opponents, and it can work especially well against OKW players because Wehrmacht players can just bring out a lot of mortars very very early on and counteract that kind of playstyle, especially with the mortar half track that uh, Kenfing does not have since he chose Lightning War. But if he had chosen something like Spearhead Dauphin, then that would have been extremely good, and in fact here comes the flame for exactly what I thought would happen, but for some reason the MG is sitting out in the front porch, I guess just doing some kind of weird prayer to the church, um, which didn't work out quite as well as prayers do unfortunately tend to do sometimes. Whoa, look at that flame bug thing. That, that flame was like shooting up like a crocodile flame for Holy shit, not quite sure what happened, but oh well. Very luckily the conscripts will be able to escape. And the uh, combat engineers still kind of trying to fight over this area, but unfortunately it looks like these grenadiers will be able to come in and repel them. But the grenadiers decide to stay... And don't think that's quite the best firing line there, Schultz. Okay, they finally realized that they're not shooting anything through those thick walls. And they tried to fire a rifle grenade through the bushes and into the church. Does do a little bit of damage and forces the... Cons or combat engineers to retreat, but also what's forced the combat engineers to retreat is the horde of folks grand years that's coming in and steals the MG42 from Panther fame. 
okay, that's very interesting, but of course, uh, both of Panther Fame's uh, squads that were around would have been not enough to actually man the MG and be able to get away with it because they were both down to three men, so the manning of the MG would have actually uh, cancelled the squad, so I, I think that's actually kind of acceptable. Whereas, the uh, Fox Junior's can obviously replenish those two guys quite easily, and we do see that the uh, Mechanizer Transporters is coming down for Gabus in pretty much the base, so he's gonna be quite safe with that, not gonna really lose it to anything. Very nice move from these constructs getting into that stone house. It does have only three windows that can fire out of it, but it's basically overlooking a ton of red cover, and it's got very excellent cover with the stone uh, garrison, so it is really good. And here comes the clown car with the flamethrower, exactly as expected from Zuzu, and he's gonna be able to use that to murder a spec against these poor, poor folks trainers. It's especially gonna be very effective while the Mechanized Regiment is not up. Now, it is going to be up very soon, and the Panzerfaust is going to be available, but these poor folks here are clumping up against the Flamethrower, and that's definitely having an effect. They go down in basically the blink of an eye. Not going to be the best possible outcome. It does look like Zuzu noticed that they were trying to get out a Panzerfaust, so he's going to be uh, retreating the clown car a little bit and getting the engineers out to prevent any kind of damage if the clown car were to go down, but the clown car will be able to survive along with just execution style coming in from the flanks, Zero's conscripts managing to help out the M3's 50 caliber machine gun in dealing with that squad. So that's two squads down for Gabus, and he's gonna have a hard time replacing those in the early game, so that's gonna be not good, but while you cannot get a flame Mortar half track with a mortar half track with the flame rounds. You can get a flame half track with just flame projectors, just burning down the hammer and sickle, and soon enough gonna be burning down the entire building. Now, um, this took quite a while because this building is made of stone, so it takes a little bit longer. But very good job with the counter coming in from Panther Fame. So one forward HQ down for the Soviets, and that's really the main reason why you want to bring out this doctrine for the forward headquarters. Now, he also had the M2, uh, I'm sorry, M42 45mm anti-tank gun, which is a very light anti-tank gun, which could have, in numbers, in fact two of them, could have helped out with the uh, destruction of this flame half track, but it doesn't look like they went for that. And, well, only now he brings out one of those AT guns, and that's a little bit too late. You also want to bring them out more in numbers. One AT gun of this kind is not going to do anything. It's very, very low on penetration and damage. So really, not gonna be enough to take out that um, that flame half track. In fact, the flame half track is gonna be able to very easily come in, just project some flame upon this very very poor and tank on crew, and take them out very easily. Now, Fox Junior is being updated with some STGs, and there's a Luke's coming on the field. Excellent flame grenade gonna be going down on those conscripts, doing quite a lot of damage to them. And it looks like Zuzu doesn't really have the medics on his HQ because he was expecting his forward HQ to have actually um, have that capacity so he really won't have the ability to reinforce and heal up his squads as much as he would like to. I was, If I was him, yeah, it would be smart enough to move it down to uh, Zero's base. Zero does already have the tank battalion command so he does have the T70 available to him. T70 will be able to very easily well, maybe not very easily. We'll be able to scare away the Lukes a little bit. Of course, the Lukes will have to rely on the support of the Volkswagen and perhaps even our Kenver for now. The Germans don't really know if the Soviets are going for any kind of vehicles or not, but if I was them, I would be kind of... Just for safety, bringing out some anti-tank capabilities such as PAX and Rekenwerfers. Right now, the T-70 is starting to chase down the uh, German vehicles. Fortunately, these conscripts will be very late at throwing their tank grenade. Engine grenade is going to phase through the building and actually destroy the engine of the flak half track, or sorry, the flame half track. T-70 is going to try to chase. That's definitely not a good idea and decides that maybe it is not that good of an idea because there could have been a mine. There could have been other units waiting for the T-70 behind those bushes in ambush. And it could have, there could have been even a Puma for whatever reason there from the Germans. Right now, Pan for Fame hasn't really revealed his doctrine quite yet, and Zero hasn't either because it's an armored assault package, which means that the Raider Intercept is something that he's going to be already getting the benefit of. As you can see, right now on his perspective, he gets the um, warnings of any kind of German units that might be coming on the field, which is obviously extremely useful because information is very, very, very important about, um, well, 
everything that your enemy could be doing. So you want to take it as much as possible. And one really good way to do that is with the Spray or Intercept, but also later on he's going to be able to use both the T-3485s and the IS-2. On this map, I prefer the IS-2 because the T-3485s do have a bit of a problem when they can't exactly flank uh, in big wide open spaces because they tend to get stuck a lot on uh, various different pathing objects in these kinds of close-in maps, but we'll see if he can avoid that if he decides to indeed go for some T-3485s. He may even not and just go for the S2 and use it along with the other perks of Armored Assault compared to something like um, Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics, which is obviously the only other one that has the S2. S2 always being a very, very good option for the Soviets if you just want a all-round decent vehicle that can uh, be acting as a heavy tank and do quite a bit of damage to enemy infantry. We do see that these Sturm Pioneers are starting to get some harassment on the left side and going to be planting some mines at the doorway of this manor. Now, it's going to be interesting if the Allies fall for this because the Germans haven't planted any mines so far. So. Really, there should be no warning coming in for the allies that this is happening, but as you can see, Zuzu is already planting lines, and as the old saying goes, if there is an old saying that goes like that, I don't know, uh, as the old saying goes, when you do something, the other person might be doing it as well. So remember that when you place mines, you should have a mental trigger in your head, thinking, oh, maybe the other guy is also having the same idea, because, of course, I am the most smart person in the world, but if I'm fighting against this guy, it means that the game thinks that he's about as smart as I am, so... I should probably pay attention to this. Now, M5 Hashra coming in from zero with the quad upgrade. Interesting. I would have thought that he could have used that for reinforcements on the field because it seems like his infantry is having some problems, but it looks like right now he's having a bit of problems keeping the half track alive as well because it takes a very devastating volley from the Panzer Shrek equipped Panzer Grandiers. Now, they will be forced to retreat by the quad's suppression, which is going to be good for zero. However, He's going to be needing to pay a little bit more close attention to it in the future because he really does not want to lose that 120 munitions investment. He does also does not want to lose the 30 fuel investment that he made on that half track because 30 fuel may not seem like much and in the long term it isn't, but when you're thinking about the short term when you might be rushing into something like a Su-76 to have that additional anti-tank capabilities, 30 fuel is basically an entire minute's worth of fuel income, so if the enemy can get out something a minute quicker than you, it might become a problem. And it looks like the mine did indeed explode, and it only killed a couple of combat engineers, so it wasn't really any big problem. And because of that, it does look like... no, that's actually just zero. Zuzu still does not have some minesweepers, which is a bit of a problem, and in fact he's floating a ton of manpower, and all of his squads are starting to go down in terms of numbers, so he really needs to be reinforcing his squads and keeping them healthy and in the field. Now, he doesn't have the support weapons Campanella, which means that he will not be able to bring out the Maxims to actually hold the territory he gets, which is part of the reason why the Germans are still able to come in with the OKW forces and actually recapture these areas quite easily. There goes the T-70. Excellent, excellent cloak for Ken Ripper. Going to be able to take that vehicle down quite easily. So again, allies losing lots of high-value sort of assets that they might rather uh, be keeping, but unfortunately that is the way sometimes, especially with close-in maps such as this one. Vet-free Flame Half-Track is still going for fan for fame, and we'll see how the Allies can actually deal with it. Uh, there is a Su quad just trying to get a good line of sight on any kind of German units that might be coming through from the cemetery. There is the Lux up here in the north still doing its own thing, and it... Well... What was that? Is that a flame grenade? Because I saw an allied unit, and it does look like it was a flamethrower that popped. Yeah, he had a flamethrower engineer, so rip flamethrower engineer. That was exactly anticlimactic of a loss for the flamethrower engineer, but... Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to replace that at all. Now, what could both of these teams be doing right now? Fan for Fame definitely is going for something late game. He has 122 fuel in the back pocket, in fact 200. He has the Tiger available to him, but he hasn't gone for any tier 3, even though he upgraded the Battle Phase 2, so I think 
he might... Oh, there goes the half-track. But there goes the other half-track as well, I think. I don't think it's going to be able to escape. Oh, the wall is still intact. Trump saves the Zisu. Interesting. Okay, perfect. Very lucky for the Zisu to actually escape from that. I would have expected it to die. Oh, the Panzer Grenadiers, though, are trying to get the last shot in. They are able to escape the first rounds from the half-track suppression, but they can't escape the second one because they were in a pretty bad position in terms of directional cover. So the half-track actually manages to escape, which is very, very fortunate for Zero, as he's going to be relying on that half-track quite a bit in terms of actual suppression because he's got a Maxim as well, but the Maxim does have some problems with line of sight with all the cemetery walls that are around, so he's going to need to rely on um, that mobile platform of the half-track. Right now, OKW also looking to go into the late game with two, count them, two Obersoldan coming out of the Schwer Panzer Corps. Gabus does have 300 munitions, so he's going to be able to very, very easily upgrade both of those. It will be interesting to see whether or not he goes for the Elite Armored or the Special Operations for the Infrared SDGs. Special Operations would be extremely good. With him going with two Obersoldan, I highly doubt that he's going to go with the Breakthrough Doctrine because if he wanted to go for Panzer Fusiliers, I think he would have done it earlier, before 9 Command Points, that is. And yeah, um, I think that Special Operations would be okay for those things. There goes the Luke's hitting a mine, and it's going to go down. It is unless it can kill the AT gun first. AT Grenade going in on the roof of the Pang. But... I don't think it's going to be able to escape the anti-tank gun if the anti-tank gun can bring itself close enough. But Deluxe is trying to get its last rounds in with the 35mm, but it dies. There it goes. Gabus is pretty happy, or pretty sarcastically happy about it. Here comes the TG-476, runs over the entirety of the Volksgrenadiers. Volksgrenadiers is going to be trying to get in a Panzerfaust against the T-34, but the Panzerfaust does not go off because the guy wisely decides to escape the hulking mass of steel that might be trying to kill him and then she comes an incendiary flame barrage from Zuzu and another Panzerfaust goes in but it does not do any kind of damage to the engine of the CT-34 because of its heavy HP there goes that squad no the guy magically survives a like fucking <laughs> magically survives a 15 kilogram explosive explosion yeah <laughs> I mean of course explosives are explosions but yeah, it magically survives the explosion at Lubbock about a meter away. So very lucky on that Conscript's part. And right now the T-34 is able to freely just bully these poor Obersoldan who have no defense against that. So that is exactly the way you want to use the T-34-76 against those very high value infantry squads that can't do anything against you. Rakan is going to be able to set up against this poor um, Zusu Half-Track and is going to be able to bring it down quite easily. <coughs> Combat Engineer is also able to remand that M42. And right now the Allies are quite well spent in terms of... Um, quite well spent? Quite well positioned in terms of map control. They do have a bit of a demo charge. It will, in fact, in general, Zero seems to be just hunkering down on the right side. Just placing all kinds of weird obstacles and traps for the Germans in case they come in. And coming in they are with looks like a couple of support weapons such as the pack and the machine gun. But really, the main force that Panzer Frame is going to be looking to get in the field are these Panzer Grandiers. And the Panzer Grandiers are going to be very useful against the armor with those Panzer Shrek packages. There is also the possibility of a Broom Bear coming in. Very good job coming in with the Mind Supers and detonating that Demo Charge before it could do any kind of weird damage against the Germans. And right now, I think both of these squads from Zero are going to have to withdraw if they don't want to get blastered by the 152mm main gun of the Brumbear. Brumbear obviously being very effective at these kinds of assaults where the enemy is entrenched in any kind of funnily type of position where normally it would be kind of hard to flush him out. And in fact we do see the special operations being selected for Gabus going with the two Obersoldan and the SDGs. They're going to be fairly effective against these conflicts. I mean we're pretty certainly gonna be um, knowing that, but we'll see how he can use these Obersoldan against other types of threats, such as these penals. Really, the main thing that's kind of worrying me is this T-34-76. If Zuzu continues to 
hold the armor superiority on the left side of the map, which isn't, you know, necessarily a given considering the Panzer IV that's coming out for Gabus. But if he can hold the armor superiority, then he's going to be able to very, very easily bully these poor Obersoldan and pretty much effortlessly continue to hold the left side of the map whenever he wants. Now, we'll see if he can actually continue that with the Panzer IV on the field. Definitely better for that... Um, would have been a Panther, I mean, to counter the T2-4. Would have been a Panther command tank. But the Panther command tank being very expensive, I don't think that Gabus was really quite ready to uh, shoulder that big expense, especially when his enemy does have those four infantry squads to deal with as well. He would also want some kind of additional anti-infantry capabilities. Always remember, of course, that he does have 800 manpower in elite infantry on the field, so not exactly, um, not exactly lacking in terms of counters for enemy infantry. Now, T-3485 from Zero has taken quite a bit of damage, looks like from the pack, and it's going to be very easy to avoid getting T-34 shot up by the pack on this kind of map. All that you need, really need to do is coming through a flanking maneuver. What he's going to be worried about are Teller Mines, so he really needs to be bringing over these Minesweeper equipped combat engineers along with the party. Very good job, by the way, by uh, Panther, noticing that there is a fuel cache and using that Brum Bear's uh, main gun to basically really good advantage at destroying these very, very easy targets for at least something so big and so powerful. Now, this is exactly what you want to do. Um, and if the Brum Bear can spot this other fuel cache, it's going to be able to do it, I believe, from this range as well. Not sure, it might be a little bit too far away. But always remember with the Brum Bear because. Um, at bed 1, you do get that bunker-busting barrage, which is um, a bit of a help when dealing with enemies quite far away without line of sight. Now, L2 Sturmovic attacks being called in by Zero. That's a very, very interesting choice because of the fact that... Ooh, very nice incendiary barrage. Gonna be burning down the church! What a Soviet thing to do right now for Zuzu, and he's gonna be able to clear out the machine gun with that, and the church is in fact going to collapse, so the state atheism is gonna be enforced by the Soviets over here, and that's going to be uh, not going too well for the Germans because they were using that church to pretty much great effect to push the Soviets back into the base, and in general they seem to be doing quite well in terms of map control right now. They do have a bit of a push going towards the left side of the map as well with these Obersoldan, and if Gabes can keep the pressure up and sort of keep all these units from Zuzu in the left side of the map, Especially if he can also uh, bring in a few units from Zero every once in a while, then he's going to be able to have a very easy time, uh, or rather his ally is going to have a very easy time on the right side of the map. So we'll see if that can continue. Very luckily for the half track, the Panzer IV decides to actually not kill it for whatever reason. I guess he was kind of afraid of any kind of anti tank guns that might have been waiting in the rear. You do see that um, Zuzu has made the upgrade from the 45 millimeter to the 60, no, 76 millimeter ZS3, which is gonna be good because that poor 45 millimeter was not exactly cutting it against those later vehicles that the Germans are bringing out, and so having that superior penetration for the ZS3 is gonna be very effective. And what the Allies also really need to start doing is avoid getting their troops shut up in useless assaults, so they need to kind of group, group their forces a little bit better and launch more coordinated attacks, and especially with better usage of flanking maneuvers. Here comes the anti-tank grenade on the Brumbear. Brumbear going to be taking quite a bit of damage on the engine, so especially with the flare that's coming in from the mortars, very good job from, I believe, Zero. Yeah, very good job from Zero utilizing that ability on his mortars to actually see the enemy. He's going to be able to at least know that the Brumbear is damaged and he can have a bit of a better free reign on the right side of the map. In fact, he's going to be able to use that fairly effectively with the 485 along with the quad. does look like the shot will then need a mine and deal quite a bit of damage to the German infantry. There is a panther on the field for panther. <laughs> well, of course. Of course there's a panther on the field for panther. Unfortunately, this is going to uh, delay the tiger, but the tiger is free command points away for him. So if you can get the panther out and get it bedded up a little bit, He's going to also have the ability to get out the Tiger later on anyway, so it's a pretty decent idea for him to go for the Panther right now. And also, it's going to be coupling perfectly with that Rum Bear. Won a very... Ooh! Mine! Okay, interesting. 
one a pretty mobile anti-vehicle unit and the other one a not so mobile but much better armored at least i believe it's better armored don't quote me on this I haven't looked at the stats in quite a while and they're definitely well armored not quite as fast not quite as maneuverable but very good against infantry unit and there goes the anti-tank gun from what mortar rounds oh there goes the grand here the reason i was kind of surprised about it because it hit the stone wall, right? And so it did not explode, but it still killed the guy because obviously it still does damage. It's just a visual bug. So it was a very weird thing to actually look at. Right now, Zero does have a ton of infantry squads, free engineer units. I'm not quite sure what he's doing with these free engineer units. I definitely see a few mines being planted around for the allies, but I don't see the engineers being used. In any other kind of way, T-3476 almost pinning the Obersodan back to the wall, but the Obersodan will wisely retreat, thus making themselves invulnerable to the T-34's very, very, very dangerous advances. And well, here comes an incendiary barrage on the German support weapons, forcing them to retreat, which is going to buy a little bit of time for the Allies to regroup on the left side of the map. And if the allies don't regroup in general, then they're going to have a hard time because they only have 200 DPs left, which is going to be a very, very nice catalyst for action for the allies. Because if they don't do something right now, then they're going to have a pretty hard time. And there goes the T-34 on the left side. Or no, there goes the other T- Well, definitely something, some kind of vehicle just died for Zuzu. He does have a Kachusha on the field, which so far hasn't really done anything. Looks like it will be fired on the right side of the road. It's not going to really do much because it completely misses everything, which is exactly the reason why it usually doesn't really pay off to get the Chushi if you're not going to be prepared to actually uh, aim them correctly. And there goes the S2 from Zero. Now, we'll see if this S2 can actually turn the tide for the allies on the right side of the map. My opinion is that it can if it's well micro to stay away from this pack. The pack is going to be extremely dangerous for it. Not unlike these Panzer Truck equipped Panzer Grandiers, but remember with the Panzer Grandiers, the S2 is able to much more easily deal with them than the um, <coughs> than the pack. So we'll see about that. And there goes the T3485 because it stayed in the close air support run from the Stukas by Panzer Fame a little bit too long, so that was not exactly the best option for that T34. Conscript's going to be able to throw with their last living breath and a tank grenade on the rear engine of the Panther. That's kind of slowing it down and forcing it to repair for quite a while. Making it unusable for the Germans. And right now, the S2 heavy tank is luckily unequipped with a Dushka machine gun. Because if it was equipped with a Dushka machine gun, the Dushka would be firing at the airplane. thus revealing the position of the S2 and making the plane much more likely to actually fire on it. Uh, of course, there was also, there was also a Zuzu anti-aircraft half-track, because remember, this thing's main purpose is supposed to be anti-air, firing at the aircraft as well, so it was kind of distracting the aircraft and also dealing damage to them. And we'll see if the Allies can keep control of the right side of the map. With the S2, my opinion is, again, yes. We'll see once the Tiger comes out, though, because the Tiger is going to be able to spearhead assaults into the right side sectors when the eyes hold control. Now on the left side there is a command path on the field, but the command path for Iska is not going to really do anything to help Gabus because right now the allies are going very light in terms of the armor on the left side of the map. So what I would really see as a better option would have been, well, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about the Sturm Tiger, but of course he went for the special operations. So really, maybe a better option would have been another Panzer IV even, because he really needs some way to deal with all these allied infantry units, and also some kind of way to just very quickly deal with them. Uh, because he does have the Zober Soldan, but the Ober Soldan are going to be basically struggling against the Kachusha. We'll see if the Kachusha is used better later on though, because that's kind of resting on that hinge. If the Kachusha is used well, then the Ober Soldan are going to be in trouble. If it's not used well, then I guess the Obersodan are going to be fine, and the Command Pepper purchase is going to be excellent. Now, Command Pepper did hit a mine, it looks like, so it's going to have to repair a little bit. But the Panzer IV managed to take out one of the T-34s, so that was a bit of a good trade for the Germans. Of course, on the right side of the map, we do see that Zero is doing fairly well, and it's managing to push back the Germans a slight bit. 
Germans coming in with a counterattack are gonna be um, doing quite well it seems we'll see if the allies can muster up enough muster up enough forces to actually answer and it does look like a lot of the forces for zero are back at base replenishing or doing other tasks which means that the Germans can just bring up their stuff and just take control of the points very nicely going with two minesweepers just to be safe just in case one has to retreat such as in this case or if he needs both flanks of a push covered by a minesweeper he's gonna have that option as well Tenfer also taking quite a lot of damage he's gonna have to be repaired by Gavis right now though Zero does look like he's gonna be getting out another T-34E5 which again on this map ugh, it's good but on such a choke pointy environment with no opportunities for flanking I really don't like T-34E5 We'll see how he go. He actually manages to use it, though. I guess it all depends on that. We'll see if the Maxim MG also can do something. Now, it's taking quite a lot of damage from these poor Obersoldan who are being fired on and are managing to return fire quite handily. Here comes a rifle grenade and a flame grenade, so that patch of ground is definitely dead. Who isn't dead, though, is the Maxim crew who managed to escape quite a bit ahead of those grenade landings and so are going to be able to continue once reinforced pouring down lead upon the Germans. Now, on the right side, nicely the S2 is going to be pushing up with the support of some conscripts. Finally, looks like Zero was able to bring together a bit of a coherent force, but he needs still to wait for half of his forces that are coming up from the base, so he's going to be wanting to get that attack to be as coordinated as possible, as simultaneous as possible, possibly from two different directions. With the 3485 coming in from the wide flank so that it can use some kind of flanking maneuvers while the S2 comes in and tries to draw the fire of the German anti-tank guns and the Panther. But it does look like once the anti-tank gun is spotted, both the allied vehicles will retreat just to be safe and try to get the infantry to do the brunt of the fighting as well, which is possibly an interesting and smart decision. Because if that infantry can come in with a flank maneuver, because there are no German troops actually covering the flank, and there are no machine guns ready to actually suppress this push, if the infantry can come in from the side, they can throw some anti tank grenades on the German vehicles, and they can come in and flame out the crew of the pack gun. So if they can do that, then they're gonna have a fairly easy time. Here comes a one inch tank grenade, hopefully on the Panther. Doesn't look like though uh, Zero was able to quickly enough throw an anti tank grenade, which is definitely a mistake because it's gonna allow the Panther to escape. But this Storm Panzer is definitely going to go down if the... Where's the T-3485? Where are you? Go, go back in the fight! <laughs> Get back in, you idiot! <laughs> I mean, there's just a very easy target. He's even showing the very juicy bottom. I mean, he has like model A++ ass. Come in and get some of that. <laughs> get in the rear and do something. Okay, here comes uh, an ancient grenade also on the Panther, but it doesn't destroy the engine. Very lucky on that Panthers part. Now, the pack gun is also available for the Germans to assist, and it's not doing anything, but now we'll turn around and start firing upon the Allied troops. Here comes a ram from the rear. Looks like the D-34 wants some of that, and it will destroy the Panther with the support of the S2, but here comes another scraping run from the Super Close Air Support, which means that the other Allied vehicles will be zoned away, and the Tiger will be able to basically do the same to the D-34 as the D-34 did to the Panther. AKA someone should call the police because that was very, very much sexual assault. Now, Obersonai are going to be able to capture the center VP. Right now the Allies do have control of both the VPs. So they have managed to actually bring the Germans down to 172 and are now ahead. So that was a very good streak for the Allies because they were at 200 and the enemy were at like 250 something. So they managed to get quite a lot of damage dealt to the tickets for the Germans. Here comes the Shuka Barrage, says direct hit and hits a mine. So I'm pretty sure that uh, Gavis is going to be extremely confused because he heard the guy said direct hit and there's zero kills. So he's going to be like, what the fuck is going on? What are you talking about? And yeah, he's going to be pretty confused by that. Now, Command Panther is still on the field. What happened to the Panther before? Well, we know what happened. Well, okay, we know the ending, but we don't know what happened in the middle. Plot hole. Please tell me. Not really quite sure what happened to it, but it's dead. Unfortunately. 
Oh yeah, I was about to say, what's that noise? And then I remember that there's a tiger around. Now the tiger is going to be extremely useful for Panther. Unfortunately, he lost the Panther. Uh, so he's not going to really have the smaller cat to go along with the big cat. And that's going to be a problem. Because if the allies, aka Zero, can muster up enough t 485s Oh, hi. Hi there, Hans! <laughs> I guess you're manning BMG now. Okay. Um, if he can mess, muster up the 385s and come in from a flank, get a very nice flank off, before the Tiger can react, that's going to be exactly the ticket to victory right now. I was about to say the ticket to ride. I don't know why I got that song in my head now. <laughs> and yeah, um, it would be very nice if they can get the ticket to success with that flanking maneuver. Unfortunately, it does look like the Soviets will be coming in with a frontal assault, which is not exactly what you want to do with the 385s. It is exactly what you want to do with the S2 heavy tank. It does look like both of the vetted up Panzer Grenadiers went down, especially the ones with the Panzer Shrex are a very hard loss for Panther fame because he's not going to be able to replace those because he doesn't have any munitions. And soon enough, I think a big allied armor push is going to be coming in because all three of the tanks are available for the push. And right now, this German tanks are kind of stuck in a very narrow strip of land that's going to be not allowing for much maneuver or much retreat, especially with the Sturmpanzer being damaged in the engine. Su-85 is going to be coming in and using the focus site to provide some spotting potential for the rest of the allied forces, along with uh, both the infantry support and the 122mm main gun of the S2, and the Zeus uh, quad cal, quad 50 cal, going to be able to very easily take out the pack. Pack in fact, very nicely is positioned right at the Germans. I'm not quite sure why these constructs did not quite take the opportunity that the Germans so graciously provided them to get some shots off from that deadly 75mm up on the frontal armor on the Tiger. But here comes the Panther, and does he does realize that he's a bit in the wrong party. It's a bit like if you're one of those fancy kids and you, you know, you're going to the party of the other fancy kids and you stumble upon the party of like the metalheads or something. And you realize, oh shit, I'm in the wrong neighborhood and I have to run away. That's exactly what happened to this Panther. He was looking for his buddies over here, but his buddies got a bit wasted last night. So they're going to be recovering back to base, you know. Hopefully they're going to be recovering soon. And the Stuka's still not really getting any kills. He get went for actually a second barrage, but it doesn't look like he got any kills. But he did get some damage off, so it makes me wonder what he actually fired at. He might have tried to counter battery. He might have hit a fuel cache. <laughs> Sorry for the burp. I'm not really quite sure. Wait, what flare is that? Is that a. Oh, right. <laughs> I'd forgotten. Special operations is around. So now Gabus knows that there is a machine gun over here in the manor. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, the Stuka Barrage was aimed at the manor, but it didn't collapse it, it didn't do much damage to the units inside either, because of the very, very hefty construction. Clearly, whoever the Lord of Trois-Ponts was in the, uh, that looks like 18th, 18th or 19th century, and now more like 19th century architecture. So whoever the Lord of Trois-Ponts was in the 19th century, he definitely was not on the cheap side when it comes to fortifications of his manor. Very, very nice. Gonna be protecting that Maxim machine gun now. One thing that the Germans are doing wrong is that they're not really going with the harassment enough. Obviously, if they had been a little bit more active on the flanks, which can sometimes can't be done because the map, again, is very narrow, doesn't allow for quite as much flanking. But if they had been a little bit more active on the flanks, I feel like they would have been able to force the Allies to use a little bit more than one Maxim machine gun to actually hold that position. And then if they had managed to get bit of control on that left side DP every once in a while, then he wouldn't be in a position of getting triple capped right at the end with 75 points remaining, which is exactly what you don't want to happen. Now, very good Stuka Barrage this time, takes out one of the mortars with its veteran C3 going down, is not going to be very good for Zeus, or sorry, Zero, that was Zero's mortar, but the uh, Germans can actually not push in the center where they, or sorry, in the right where they would want to push because there's just, just a sheer amount of allied units that are on this side. Even with the Tiger coming in and free Grand Year squads that were just built, Panther is not really able to make a headway because of the sheer amount of forces that the allies have. 
Hauser is going to be just charging in and exposing themselves to the fire of that Rumbear, which, by the way, has 44 kills. But they're going to be forced to retreat by also the flank from even from the Volkswagen years. Of course, there's still this this S2 that's actually kind of fighting for the control of the right side. Very nice job with these Volkswagen years. Going to be able to capture the center, but it's a bit too late because, again, the Germans are very, very low on VPs. Very nice usage of the command path. We're gonna be able to take out that T-3485. No, goes out of line of sight just long enough for it to escape. There is a Jagdpanzer on the field for Gabus. I think that was definitely a mistake. Along with the Stuka, I think that was also a mistake. I think he should have gone for a King Tiger at some point. And yeah, uh, there goes the T-3485. And the Germans don't have any infantry left to come in and capture the point. Uh, so even though there is a bit of cover coming in from the tanks that could be used by the infantry to come in and capture the point. There is no infantry. So that's definitely going to be a bit of a bummer for the Germans. There goes the other T-3485, but the IS-2 is still alive, so it can still do its job as a deterrent if it needs be. In fact, if it was still in fight... Excellent shot! <laughs> I was not expecting that! That was like a screen and a half away and through a hill! Wow. Um, MVP S-285 getting that last round in. Very, very good kill on the Tiger. And now, just in time at 8 C er, sorry, VP is managing to nuke the point from those Pioneers. Very good job by Panther. But I still don't think that the Germans are going to be able to stop the S2 once it comes back in play. Because they lost a Panther, they lost a Tiger, and they lost also a Brumbear. No, that was the Panther, right. They're getting out a second Panther from Panther fame, and Gabus... Oh right, he went for that uh, horrible Jagdpanzer, which is going to be useful for defending the right side of the map, but for everything else, especially pushing, not going to be that useful. Here comes the Kachusha, going to be dealing quite a bit of damage, or completely missing the Obersoldan. Yeah, that Kachusha hasn't really done anything this entire game, has it? 11 kills, absolutely not what you'd be looking for in a rocket artillery piece that's been alive for this long. Gonna be coming in with the coordinated fire from the command panther on the 3485. Gonna be able to very easily make an escape. T3485 does not want to get entangled with the fight with that glorious cat. So it's gonna have to escape. But right now, the allies are gonna have a bit of a um, opportunity because the panther is in the middle to go for the right side of the map. Now, Zero does have two T3485s that are operational. One T-3485 that's kind of waiting repairs, and the S-2. So the S-2 will be coming in and trying to be a bit of a spearhead for the push. Might be able to wipe out all these Grandiers that are clumped up. Miraculously doesn't kill the other one as well. Very lucky for this Grandier to escape with just a sliver of health. Here comes a uh, death of a T-3485 in the south. But it looks like the uh, Yacht Prancer will be going down with a great Circle Strafe from the Southern T-3485. And also, a nice push in the center from the Conscript will be able to cripple the engine of this poor T-34, or sorry. Of course, it's the German T-34, the Panther. Gonna be able to cripple the Panther's engine, along with the support coming in from the S-2. They're gonna be able to probably capture the center VP. Dishka machine gun firing and just murdering the Panzer Grandiers who are trying to desperately get in the cap to hold the, the Allies for just a tiny bit more. Panther's frontal armor saves it for one last time against the allied rounds that were coming in from the SU-85, but it's not enough to save the game for the Germans, who will be going down with no VPs. Now, I've already talked about what the Germans, I think, could have done better. A little bit more, well, I mostly talk about Gavis, actually. Sturm Tiger, King Tiger, bit less recklessness with the Command Panther. Maybe they're relying a little bit more on vehicle-based anti-infantry when the enemy has tons of machine guns, mortars, and artillery instead of elite infantry. And what else? What else for Gabes? Well, he flooded a lot towards the end, so he could have been a little bit more aggressive as well. And then Panfer, I think that... <coughs> I think that he could have definitely gone for a Tiger a little bit earlier. Although, I guess in general, his build order was not too bad. It was just the fact that he managed to get himself stuck on this area quite a lot. It's not something that you ever want to do. Get yourself stuck into an area where it's a bit hard for units to actually pathfind around. Never really actually want to do that. So, 
I would advise him to be a little bit more wary of the terrain where he would be fighting. No usage of Relief Infantry, interesting enough. Relief Infantry is an ability that is very, very useful to get a few cannon fodder Ostrupen that are able to replenish so just fallen support weapons, cap around the map, get Panzerfaust off on enemy vehicles, spearhead assault, scout. Just a general very nice sort of utility infantry that can be used for quite a lot of purposes. <clears throat> Decent usage of the stupid close air support, but I feel like he could have cut on that a little bit just to get a few more uses of relief infantry in. While for the allies, Zero played pretty much perfectly, I think. I really don't see any other thing that Zero could have done. He had a bit of problems with the T-3485 early enough. But again, the T-3485s are mostly just a uh, unit that's not quite so good on this map. So maybe maybe a little bit of a big... <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. I a little bit of a bigger focus on Su-85s instead of T-3485s. Would have been better. Now, however, Zuzu went for the Su-85s and got a little bit of a better result. However, he had a bit of problems in the rest of the compartment. Now, if he wanted the incendiary artillery barrage, he could have gone a special or shock rifle frontline tactics, or even terror tactics, and would have gotten a little bit better usage of it other than urban defense. Urban defense was really a gimmicky pick, which wasn't really all that great in the end. I don't feel like it was a good idea, but I guess he tried. <laughs> he could have tried getting some more Ford HQs up later on, but they would have also gone destroyed. So it's good that he didn't. At least he didn't waste more fuel on that. He was very heavy on the floating side, both in terms of manpower in the early game and in fuel in the late game. So he needs to work on the well floating a little bit less department. He's going to be definitely the winner of the floating Olympics today. Other than that, I don't really see any other problems. So yeah, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you've enjoyed or if you didn't, leave a rating according to your enjoyment, obviously. <laughs> Unless you want to leave a dislike if you enjoyed and a like if you didn't enjoy. I don't know. There's people who do that. I hope you learned something and I'll see you soon.